Hi there! Here's what I've got for you today. Watch it and learn from it. Active voice and passive voice with emphasis on the use of the simple tenses. What is the difference between active and passive voice? How should we convert verbs from the active voice to the passive voice? Do these sentences mean the same? Number one, Ike reads a book. Who is the doer? EK, and it's used as the subject. What is the receiver? A book, and it is used as a direct object. What does a direct object do in a sentence? It completes the meaning of a transitive verb. How? Well, it answers the question that starts with what. What does EK read? A book. So this sentence follows the pattern STVDO. Are you familiar with this pattern? S stands for subject, TV stands for transitive verb, and DO stands for direct object. This time, a book, which is the receiver of the action, becomes the subject. And the subject, which is the doer of the action, which is the subject here, becomes the object of a preposition. And, by the way, an object of, of a preposition is any noun or a pronoun after a preposition. By is an example of a preposition. So, EK functions as the OP in the sentence. Now, have you seen the difference of these two sentences in terms of their structure? They actually mean the same thing, only their difference is their structure. So, the verbs differ in voice. Active voice when the doer is at the beginning and it's used as the subject. Passive voice when the doer is at the end or sometimes unknown. So, number one is in the active voice and number two is in the passive voice. Why do writers sometimes choose to use the passive construction? Well, there are two reasons. First, they want to emphasize the receiver of the action because it's more important than the doer. Second, they do not know the doer of the action. That's why it says here, sometimes the doer is unknown. I hope it's very clear now. So when we say active voice, the subject is the doer of the action. When we say passive voice, the subject is the receiver of the action, and sometimes the uh, doer of the action is unknown, okay? So that's the difference between active voice and passive voice. Now, let's see if you can already recognize sentences using a verb in the active voice or in the passive voice. Always remember, when the doer of the action is used as a subject, the verb is in the active voice. But when the doer is used as the object of the preposition or when the doer is unknown, the verb is in the passive voice. Okay, let's begin. Number one, EJ helps his brother with his modules. So the doer there is EJ and it's used as the subject and located at the beginning. So that's at the voice. Number two, face masks are sold everywhere. Who sell face masks? Unknown. And so the answer is passive voice. Number three, travel permits are required in establishments. Who require travel permits? Not known also. We do not know the doer. So it's passive voice. Number four, Jomel finalized the music video of the group. Who is the doer? Jomel and that's used as the subject and it's located at the beginning so it's active voice. Number five, John takes vitamin C for a strong immune system. Who takes vitamin C? It's John, and that's used as the subject, so it's active voice. And the last one, the health certificate was signed by the municipal doctor. Who signed the health certificate? It's the municipal doctor, and it's at the end. It's used as the object of the preposition, so we have passive voice. Okay, so I hope the difference between active voice and passive voice is very clear to you. So let's proceed now to the next. Converting active voice to passive voice. I am using the same sentence here. 
and see the steps. Okay, number one, find the receiver of the action. Then that receiver of the action will be used as the subject in the sentence, which will be using a verb in the passive voice. Okay, so a book. Please include the article a, uh, a book. That's the receiver, and in our passive, we are going to use that as the subject there. Next, find the verb and identify its tense. Okay, so what's the verb there? It reads, and what is the tense? Okay, present tense. Remember that when a subject is singular in present tense, we are using the S form. Why is it called S form? This, uh, the verb ends in s so that's s form okay i repeat s form is being used when uh, the subject is singular while base form okay this one base form will be used if subject plural so let's add a subject here ek and ej read a book so there base form there's no s there's no ES, there's no ED or D at the end. So it's just the base form of the verb. Now, how are you going to uh, decide on the right helping verb? Is it is or are? You go back to the number of the new subject which we are going to use here. The receiver earlier is a book. Now, let's use it as a subject. And uh, how many books are there? Only one. So you are going to use is. And then past participle of the verb read. Okay. Here are the principal parts of the verb read. Present tense, read or reads. Past tense, read. And past participle, read. So you can see that even if there is no change in spelling, the pronunciation of the past and past participle of this verb changes. It becomes red there. So uh, this verb is an example of uninflected verb, meaning when you form its past tense and the uh, past participle, there is no change in spelling. Okay, so what is now uh, the past participle there is red. So we are now going to write here the verb, the complete verb is red and then the doer so let's write here by adding by okay a book is read by ek that one is the complete sentence using a verb in the passive voice examples i have three sentences here but before answering these three let's have first the formula which i formulated based on the steps of converting active voice to passive voice. Receiver of the action, that's the subject, plus is or are for present tense, was or were for past tense, will be for future tense, plus past participle of the verb, plus doer, plus other words in the sentence. Okay, so let's have now number one. Mark Chan bought a box of face masks. The receiver of the action, a box of face masks. So let's uh, make use of that as uh, the subject. And then the verb is what? That's past tense. So we're going to uh, look at the number now of the subject. The main subject is a box. Well, the complete subject here is actually a box of face masks. But let's consider the number of the main uh, subject here. And it's only one, so we are going to use was bought by Mark Chan. Okay, number two. Mark Chan buys several boxes of face masks. So receiver, again, several boxes of face masks. And then the verb is present tense. So we're going to choose between is and are. And since this is plural, we're going to use are. So are bought by Mark Chan. Okay, number three. Mark Chan will buy a box of face masks. Again, receiver of the action will become the subject. And then this, uh, the tense of the verb is will buy. That's future tense. So we're going to use will be bought by Mark Chan. Okay? So as easy as that. What if a sentence is using a continuous form 
or the ing form or the progressive form of a verb, just like here. Instead of using makes, we are using now is making. Okay, so actually there is no change, but you only have to add a word which is being in the passive voice. Let's find out how. So step number one, the receiver of the action, make it as the subject. And then the tense of the verb, so is making, that's present tense. So you're going to use is also since a Christmas lantern is only one. And then I repeat, you are going to insert being now plus the past participle of making. So is being made and then the doer by Emily. As easy as that. Okay, number two, Filipinos were celebrating Christmas as early as September. Receiver of the action, Christmas. And then the verb, we're celebrating, so it's past tense. Where is used here because Filipinos, the subject, is plural. And now we are making Christmas as the subject and we must stick to the tense. So is it where or was? Okay, it's was plus being and then celebrated. Then the rest of the sentence. So that's the complete passive voice of the given sentence. Okay, now I am giving you a list of irregular verbs with their principal parts. I know some of you have forgotten these irregular verbs, so you can make use, uh, uh, this one as your reference because in converting uh, a verb in the active voice to the passive one, you really need the past participle of verb. Okay? So these verbs are really helpful in converting active to passive voice. Now, I want you to try this challenge. Convert the verb from active to passive voice. But for now, I am not going to show you the answers because I want you to write them on the comment box below. And we will see if you're correct later. Okay? So I repeat, please. Write on the comment box your answers and we will check your answers later. So I'll see you again next time. Thank you and bye.